All right, so we're trying to answer this question. The function, this f of x equals all this stuff here, cubic function, has one local minimum and lo one local maximum. Use a graph to estimate these local extrema. So we're going to need to graph this function for this, and so that's where our calculator comes in. So we'll start, if you're at the home screen here, we'll start by hitting the y equals button there, and that'll get us to where we can type in our equation. And the equation we had, I'm going to have to move this out of your view here, was 2x. Notice that this button is the one that we pressed to get our x. Uh, power of 3, so cubed, minus 36x squared. And we can either use power of 2 or this squared button over here for the squared, uh, plus 120 x uh, plus 3. Now your calculator may not look exactly like this. This is sort of the new version of the uh, of the operating system. Uh, y but if yours doesn't look exactly like this, that's okay. And so now to graph it, we'll press the graph button over here. Now, depending upon the window, you may or may not see anything useful here. And in this case, Really, we can't tell what's going on with this function, and so we need to change our view in order to be able to get a better look at it. There's two ways to do that. We can either use the zoom button here to zoom out, uh, or we can use the window button here to change our viewing window, our set of, uh, the range of domain of x values and the range of y values that we are looking at. Let's start by zooming, and maybe we'll try number three here, zooming out. So we'll hit enter and then enter again, and that will zoom us out a little bit. And sometimes this lets you get a slightly better idea what's going on. And in this case, it really doesn't. So if we're not sure what's going on, one option is to look at the table of values. To do that, we can hit second and then graph to get to that blue table. And from this, I can see that my output values look like they're up in the hundreds. Uh, really big n hundreds in the negative direction, and maybe not quite so big of negatives over our, our values over here in the, as I'm getting up towards 14 or 15. So looking at the table, I can go to my window now and say, well, maybe I should set my x range for like negative 20 to 20, and my y range maybe like negative 300 to 300. Once we set that, we can hit graph again, and hopefully we're going to see something more useful now. In this case, it looks like I might need to adjust my y minimum down a little further to make sure that I get the bottom of that dip uh, in my view. So maybe we'll change that to negative 500. So now that we have a graph where we can see the important features, we can go find that minimum and maximum. So to do that, I'm going to use the calculate feature. So I'm going to hit second and then this trace button to get the blue calculate. And minimum and maximum, number three and four there, are what I'm looking for. So let's find the, that local minimum. So it's going to ask me for a left bound. This is any point to the left of the minimum. So I use my arrow keys to move my blinking dot to some point to the left of the minimum. So this will work. And I hit enter. And now it's going to ask me for a right bound. So now I move my arrow over to the, my little blinking dot over to the right side of the minimum and hit enter. And now we've told it that the minimum is somewhere in here. It's now asking me to guess, so we'll get close, hit enter, and there's the minimum. At 10 for the x value, negative 397 for the y. So we have a local minimum at an x value of 10 with an output value of negative 397. And now we could repeat that to go find the maximum.